What's the main difference between zikr and fikr? Which one should someone begin with? Zikr or fikr? Zikr and fikr. Law or zikr? Zikr and fikr. Huh? Zikr or, or fikr? Like it's a, thinking? It's a main zikr. Oh, fikr. Law. The thinking. So what's the difference of, of zikr or thikr? <laughs> and which one should someone begin with? Let me thicker about it. Yeah, <laughs> 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 no. Yeah, they go they go hand in hand. It's not something you start and then don't do the other one. So it means the way uh, of the tariqah, that's why the tariqahs all do zikr and all do fikr. <laughs> that, that's nice. It means that uh, the, the zikr is an energy. Dhikrullahi uh, ta'atmani qulub that uh, we come to the zikr to be washed and to be cleaned and to take away, you know, everything if you, if you follow our teachings. Let's reduce everything to energy. So the importance of understanding the energy and how to build the good energy. So we come with a negative energy in our lives to the associations Allah sends us for guidance. So when we have a negative energy our responsibility is to go somewhere that we can clean that energy. The zikrs are a big washing machine, as soon as you enter into the zikr the energy that is coming into the zikr is washing because the angels are circumambulating all the holy souls that are present. The zikr is washing, washing, washing all of the badness and bad character away. And then the student also has a responsibility to participate. It's not just you sit and do the zikr but the homework is to do the thinking and contemplation that if I'm coming in as a sinner and coming in with bad character, at some point I want to step in this circle without that bad character. So tafakkur and tadhakkir. Tafakkur is to take a life in which Allah says, basically stop and smell the roses. That you're moving through this life too fast, you're not getting a sense of what Allah wants for us. So we're coming then we're being washed, we're being cleaned and then tafakkur. Tafakkur is I stop and slow down, oh my Lord what is it that you want from me? What is it, what is my bad character? What am I doing wrong every night? That's why we said the isolation now can draw people to be very mad, insane mad or they become very beautific. Beautific because they sit and they realize and begin to cry, I wasted my life, I wasted my time and I could have done beautific things with what Allah gave me of my wealth, of my possession, of my time. I could have done my zikr, I could have built masjids, I could have done many things. But I was so engaged in myself and my self-desires, everything was lost and they may change towards goodness. And there are those who go in and they realize that they're just angry. They don't want to be caged, they want to be out partying, they want to be out doing every type of sinful and forbidden thing. And they regret very much that they're being locked up and then they become angrier and angrier. That's tafakkur, to stop and to get a sense that dhakr is at a much higher level in which you remember. Once you stopped and took a life of tafakkur is contemplation, contemplate, contemplate is a now a God consciousness and a self-conscious that your soul and Divine Presence will begin to communicate with you. Tell you that what you should have been doing in tadhakkir is then now remember. Remember what Allah taught us. Remember the knowledges Allah gave us, remember everything that Allah alam al-Qur'an badan khalaq al-insan. In this alam al-Qur'an what Allah taught the soul will begin to ask us. 
What Allah taught us of realities, how come you're not remembering them? Tadhakkir is then to now reach to a level in which you stopped, you contemplated and now your soul will begin to teach you to remember the ocean of reality that Allah has taught you. And that's why when we think from energy in the world of light, everything we do has been given to our soul. And the soul's dress and nobility and honour, it's all these gifts that are being dressed upon the soul, it's the soul that doesn't trust the body. The soul does not trust our physical body and doesn't want to give us any of the gifts. Thinks always that if I give you, you're going to ruin it. So there are actually two beings. There's the soul of somebody that is reaching their purification. And there's the physicality of insan. If they purify and clean their physicality, Allah will give a command from Atiullah, Ati Rasulu Ul Amri Minkum that now your soul can begin to teach you and begins to now give you the 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 hal, the feelings, khash, the visions and the knowledges. But that's until your body reaches a trustworthy state. That's why people don't want to reach that state. Say, no, no, Shaykh, just you've got to open it, you've got to open it. Even if they're family members, just open it, open it. It doesn't work that way. Your soul doesn't trust you, more or less the shaykh to trust you. Your soul's no way. And every time a test comes and you explode, you get angry, you exhibit these characteristics, the soul is saying, no, 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 see, see, this way. Because if the soul was to give you realities and you're not in control of your body, can you imagine what type of harm that would do onto this earth? It's a pharaoh. Your body would go out and be like a wizard and a magician and doing every kind of crazy deceitful thing, all from haqqaiqs. So the soul is much tougher than the TSA, CIA, Mossad, everything. It's going to evaluate your physicality. Watch all of the tests that are coming from Allah that your physicality has to be trustworthy, clean, correct and that your characteristics have to be under control. Then the soul begins to send its futuhat, its, its, its understandings and contemplation, inshaAllah. How should we improve our contemplation? The meditate. <laughs> They'll sit and, and meditate. Meditation is not easy as Western people because mm -hmm. you're a believer and Allah knows that as a believer shaitan is after you. Now if you're not a believer and you have all sorts of markings all over your place and you have dreadlocks, of course meditation is wonderful for you because shaitan already has you. He's not going to bother you, he's going to say, you go sit by this tree and the bears will be nice with you because he's already, you're already his murid. He has no interest in bothering his students, he in makes them hallucinate to think that they're seeing everything beautiful and the angels are coming and the fairies are coming. No, 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 they're all demons disguised as angels. But when you believe in Allah and you believe in the heavens and you take away of the prophetic reality that the, the prophets of oneness, of course now you're an enemy to shaitan and shaitan going to make every obstacle possible so that you don't reach your contemplation and you don't have tafakkur and you don't have tadhakkir, that you don't remember what Allah bestowed upon you. That's why it's hard. So then every time I sit to contemplate, as soon as the zikrs begin, the zikr is the perfect time of contemplation because of the energies of the shaykh. The energies come to hit the ego and give you a, a sense or a time of serenity. In that time you make your madad, your contemplation that connect your heart and then every night you make a little of your contemplation but more important what did I do wrong? What did I say wrong? What did I do wrong? What was my interaction with the fellow students or the shaykh? That one is rare because not that many people have an interaction with the shaykh because of its danger and, and it's very dangerous because they said that when you go for hajj if you start to commit sins in the haramain, it's a million times more sin than if you sinned at home. That was the concept. So that's why Allah lets not that many in their presence because the sins of those who come close is multiplied. 
so that they have to have good character and restrain themselves from their bad character. But all of this is to reach that perfection and to reach what Allah wants. Now everyone's motivated because they're all in lockdown. Then by Ramadan it'll be everybody fasting because there's not that much food. So Rajab, the whole world went into seclusion. Imagine Ramadan. Those who have training they say, Alhamdulillah we eat a little bit, we'll lose some weight, not a problem. Others are, what you're talking about, McDonald's clothes, burn it down, burn it down. <laughs> and they're not going to be very happy with uh, anybody saying no. Sayyidi, when I'm in a deep focus in meditation, I feel a movement and thumping between my eyebrows, my head. Hmm. What Maybe your spouse is like playing because <laughs> they're bored, like, come on enough, how many times do you want to do this? As soon as you close your eyes, then, <laughs> then what is that energy? The thumping between your eyebrows? <laughs> I don't know, run. <laughs> You're going to feel in, in, in tafakkur again, don't, don't focus on anything, don't, don't worry about anything coming to you. We used to train and had to go into the maqam and do our meditation every day. And when we would enter into the meditation, start making tafakkur, and it literally felt like something slapped me. Just chow. And then we would run out later on and say, you know, I'm doing my tafakkur, something hit you. And he said, why do you care? Somebody hit you, something hit you. That's not your job. Your job was to keep your heart connected through good and bad. Don't focus on the bad. Because then the bad now just won and took your attention off of your tafakkur. So it means then they begin to train you under duress and stress, that's at a different level. But just an entry level of understanding is, as soon as you meditate you're going to become sensitive. Then you're going to understand there's an entire creation that you were unaware of. You become latif and you become of a subtle nature. So when you sit and meditate and breathe and you feel or you see or you hear, ignore everything. Keep your tafakkur, keep your madad, have your faith that if you're making your madad and asking for the shaykhs, there's nothing that's going to bother you. I mean nothing going to really harm you but everything is coming to bother you, to distract you, to stop you from the meditation. Don't worry about what you see, don't worry about what begin to touch you, they would begin to touch and then face would swell up from their energies like beasting and you just keep focusing, keep focusing. Something begin to bite you, keep focusing. You should have a strong connection and the madad. You understand once you make your madad that come and dress me, dress me, the energy of the madad should come in and begin to push every negativity away so that you come to the realization of how weak we are and that when this madad and energy comes it begin to push every type of negativity away. So don't focus on, on what you see and what you hear and what you get because if it frightens you it's to stop you. Say Shaykh Abdullah Faiz Daghestani Ghatta Salah Siru, immense maqam so there's no, nothing even comparable. But as soon as he entered into seclusion that he goes for his salah a snake appeared. And the snake came up and wrapped itself all around his neck and his face to his face. Not even a spiritual snake which we have had many experiences with spiritual snake but physical snake that was looking at his face and his heart because it's connected that if you focus on this snake it will for sure bite you, you probably die in this seclusion. So he was taught, don't focus on that snake, focus on your salah. And he said that he prayed. Every time he would go for sujood, the snake moved out of the way and he would make his sujood, come back up, make his prayers. So he don't know how long he prayed like that with the snake as his companion around his neck. Why? To make sure your focus is on what? Your focus not to be distracted upon anything. You're not here for the treasures and you're not scared of the, the fears and somebody boo and trying to scare you out of your tafakkur, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, can you speak about the energetic protection of children, meaning they don't have to want to make wudu and zikr, etc. There are beings protecting them anyway? Yeah, for the children they have, uh, if 
the character is good, they have an angelic reality that's around them but they inherit the sins of the parents. So there, there's also things coming towards them. That's why the, the family is like an imam, you know the leader of the family is responsible for his practices, his actions, his character. As he's learning these realities he's bringing an energy into his home like a shield. Just like you buy ADT or security services for your house because you say, oh my god in the middle of the night I don't want to get robbed. Well this is a spiritual security. And how you buy insurance policies make sure your insurance never lapse because in the middle of the lapse that's when difficulty comes. Your insurance is your support, your energy is your security system. As soon as you're meditating there's an energy coming, an energy building, an energy coming all around the home. And many times the children want to come into that room that you're meditating and they learn your system of watching you and your breathe and your connecting. That barakah dresses them. Then watching the zikr, having a life of raising the children within the zikr, then again they be dressed by those lights and dressed by those blessings. And then all the other practices, when the children are screaming and yelling too much then you should do a wudu upon them. There's an energy that making them to howl and growl too much. So you take them gently in to the wash area and just make a wudu. Just like how water brings down fire, they also can acquire a fire because of the subtlety of their nature. So they wear the taweez like we wear the taweez. They yell and scream uncontrollably then it's your responsibility to discipline them and control that wildness and the use of water is highly advised. So you water it and put out the fire of some, someone getting too aggressive and too screaming and yelling inshaAllah. We have a COVID question. Mm. Uh, say in the United States essential workers were permitted to continue working. Are Naqshbandi Habaib advised to drop all work during COVID? Mm. What? <laughs> Is this the nurse? Nobody was advised. Everybody advised to do what they have to do according to their rizq, their sustenance, what uh, is required of them. If, if they feel they can work and they have to work then go and work. If you feel you have the ability to not work and stay home then not work and stay home. Sidi, how do we know that our account is somewhat decent with Allah so that when the time comes we can embrace death with full preparation? Yeah, how much do you love Allah and how much do you love Prophet As much as you love them and you, you love with good character and good actions. Again we've, we've talked on other times where some people you meet and they say, oh I love God, I say, but yeah why are you so mean and rotten? So how, how can somebody claim to, to love the Divine but have a rotten heart with rotten actions, harsh words? So it's a whole package. When I know that I'm trying my best to be good, to be polite at times, to correct myself when I'm, I'm being aggressive and I have an immense love, I have an immense love for Allah a love for Prophet I'm trying my best to, to be sincere then you must know that this love that's in your heart is a gift from Allah. You didn't get it. You, you didn't get it by going outside and plowing the, the garden. Allah gave you a ni'mat and a gift. That is the result of, of this good character. So when we have good character and we have this love and this compassion, it's Allah saying, this is my gift to you. That's when we talked before, when sincere person cries, Allah's in the tear. Allah's in, in every emotion of His beloved servant. He's the cause for them to have emotions, He's the cause for them to be happy and to be sad. And if they love, the greatest gift is this love. You know, not lust but love. When they have a true compassion and a love for the Divine then this is an immense gift from Allah That's why we said reduce everything to energy. If somebody doesn't have love, doesn't have good energy but they say they're making their salah is of no value. You wasted your life. What's the purpose of you praying and you're rotten? Who are you praying for? Allah didn't need your prayers, you needed your prayers. 
So these people who are focusing on just the amal, amal, amal but they never talk, is your heart good or is it rotten? If your heart is dead then it's dead man praying. Do the dead prayer count? No. This is not just two, it's dirty because the dead is not something that goes and prays. So it means that the, the heart has to be alive and sun has to be alive. When they're alive with good and loving heart everything they do is blessed and dear to Allah inshaAllah and Allah's gift is love. Two questions related to meditation, mm-hmm. um, one from a beginner. So you please tell how to begin meditation and then another brother asks, how can we progress in energy through mother the cross body meditation, mind meditation and soul meditation by grounding ourselves to be nothing? Hmm? The meditation, go to the website on how to meditate, the article on Sufi meditation on sufimeditationcenter.com, go and click on how to meditate. And we have it all written there, how to breathe, how to make the steps, very simple. Just close your eyes and, and sit for five minutes, six minutes every day and contemplate and breathe and play some nice salawat so that you're not distracted with your mind and begin the process of meditation. Later you understand on how to meditate and then to keep the presence of the shaykh in his spiritual form. And then making your connection, your rabita with uh, these awliyaullah so that you're not meditating alone and then you keep progressing in this ocean of meditation. And then in the pursuit of angelic power, so we put a whole book on how to pursue angelic power. That was a whole sort of summarization of all these hundreds of articles condensed down and what we're trying to pursue is an angelic qudra, not the uh, the magnetic uh, earth frequency of these jinn world and their electricity but angelic qudra, how to raise the character raise the frequency with zikr, with meditation, contemplation so that we resonate at an angelic frequency. Through that angelic frequency and that light, that energy then everything becomes clear, especially in Naqshbandiya. How to meditate into the heart, how to meditate with the soul, how to close off the mind, the first zikr, La ilaha illallah, La is on the head. That this way towards the Divine is not through your head. So don't use your head with the shaykh, don't don't try to think what he's saying because this la is here that cut your head, your head is of no importance into that reality. Anything that you're being taught let it come into the heart and that's end. If it leaves the heart and goes and is starts to move towards the head it's already lost because shaitan resides within insan's head. His nafs and shaitan they're up there partners together. In, in this piece of meat that's in a closet, it has never seen the light, it's seen nothing your brain. And shaitan's up there and everything contemplating, thinking, let me see, let me question, I just want to know, why you have to know? This tariqah was not about you have to know because you're saying that your head has to know means your ego and shaitan they want to be educated in what you're talking about. Why? Why do your head has to know what the shaykh is talking about? He said it. You believe it, put it into your heart. That is the way of the tariq and the way of reaching towards realities. If, if you don't take that and you keep saying, I'm not going to do it that way, then no problem. You're handicapping yourself and you will never reach to the reality. And they'll sit with you a hundred years, it doesn't matter. And in the grave they'll try to teach you. But the system they have, you cannot customize them. So sometimes people come and say, you want to ask, want to ask, want to, but you're feeding your head and your head will never be satisfied and will never take you towards your reality. And as much as you feed your head, they want a more, I want a more, I want a more. Now he opened a door into which to question everything. That's not faith. Faith is to hear it, as long as good and clean we're talking about, not crazy things. It's good and clean, it's faith, it comes into my heart, true, it's a haqq and I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to fulfill that prayer, to fulfill that obligation. As soon as it enters my head it's lost with shaitan. You learned it and understood it through your head, it has now absolutely no value to you. You just answered one of the questions. Mm. Um, another one, Sayyidi how to keep connection 
to the shaykh, although we are very weak, why do we feel sometimes we lose control and suddenly shaitan is taking control over us? Please pray for us. Yeah inshaAllah that's, that's that we're human and that we're very weak and Prophet was praying, don't leave me for a blink of an eye. If Prophet is saying, is saying not for like a fraction of a second to leave me under my nafs then we are of course we're completely lost under the, the nafs. We're at 90% under our nafs. There are very few people who can reach to not be under the influence of their nafs and then to be in the hudur of their shaykh, to be in the fana and the muhabbat of their shaykh, the fudur, the hudur and then the fana of the shaykh then these are levels of awliya. So that's not easily achieved but we took a path in which to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying and that Allah open. So it's a matter of we put in the struggle Allah declares the victory but not to think that we're ever going to be victorious. It's like an ocean, we're just sort of struggling in this ocean waiting for Allah's victory to come. Now they should be more encouraged because it looks like the whole world is collapsing. So victory should be very close. We're good? InshaAllah Allah bless you, thank you, forgive me. And uh, zikr tomorrow, zikr Saturday inshaAllah all the way till Wednesday, Shab al-Baraj, Shab al-Nisf al-Shaban that Allah dress us, bless us, the immense night of forgiveness, the hundred rakah, three surat al yaseen with all its intentions and then hundred rakah salat al khair, inshaAllah dress us and bless us with that, keep ourselves, our family and all our loved ones to be safe, inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.